Okay, so today I'm going to show you how to set up a Telnet server with SSH. So, first things first, why would you want to do that? Well, if you've got files to share, or um, traffic you want to encrypt, then SSH is the way to go. Using SSH, you can send files, you can send and receive files securely, and you can also uh, run your traffic through an SSH tunnel which will uh, encrypt it to all outside observers. Okay, so the first thing you want to do is to get your server software. So, what I'm going to use is Sigwin. Sigwin. And right there where it says setup.exe that's where you want to download, that's the file you want to download in order to set up your SSH server. We could use a different uh, server software. Um, we could use KPYM Telnet slash SSH server. But I found that up to be a little difficult. Sigwin is probably the best server software there is. Um, there's also OpenSSH and a whole bunch of other different software you can use in order to uh, s install a uh, and set up an SSH server. So, uh, oh, whoops. Right, so try that again. Okay, so I'm going to save the file and I'll walk you through the setup. Yes. So, this is the uh, Sigwin setup. So just hit next. Um, install from internet. Next. Your root directory where you want the um, installation to put the server where you want your local package directory um, and what internet connection you want to use, direct connection or use Internet Explorer proxy settings is going to use the proxy that you have for your Internet Explorer so I suggest that but if you know your host, your host name and your port for an FTP or an HTTP uh, proxy then um, you can put it right here and um, set it up that way but let's just go ahead and use Internet Explorer proxy settings. So now you have to select a mirror to download from. And there's a whole bunch of FTP and HTTP servers here. So let's just click on one at random. And next. And now it's connecting and downloading. But I already got it. I already got it um, set up. So I don't need to do that. Okay, so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna go want to go over to our Sigwin terminal. And click on that once you get it installed. So we're also gonna want to go into our um, SSH configuration file SSH config and SSHD config and we're going to want to make sure that we have those uh, set to protocol 2 instead of protocol 1 um, it's kind of like the same situation you have with RIP where protocol 2 is a lot better and more updated than protocol 1 and so you're going to want to come down here to line 19 make sure it's set to protocol 2 on SSHD config and then go to SSH config and go down to line 38 and make sure that it's enabled right like that. And then once you have that done, we can just go back to our uh, terminal and set up the rest of the server. Okay, so in order to actually start the SSH server, what you want to type is net start 
SSH. Or rather, let's start SSH D. And then that's what it looks like. And then hit enter. What? Access has been. Oh, okay. So, something that's important is uh, if you're on Windows 7, you need to run Sigwin. You need to run that as an administrator, or else it just, or else it won't work. So yes, we want to run this as an administrator. So, net start sshd. All right. So because I already have it installed and I have it set up to, um, I have it set to automatically start every time my computer boots. Um, the service has already been started for me. But here it'll say it'll say the uh, service has been started and uh, some other confirmation stuff like that. But if you want to change that and have it start up, you can go to services. Come on, come on. You have you can have it go to services. And right here it says Sigwin SSHD, which is the Sigwin server. And you can go to the properties and you can have a startup type. And see, I selected it on a Mac because I want my SSH server to always start up uh, when I start my computer. But you can select it and have it do whatever you want. And don't forget that you're going to want to open port 22 on your firewall or uh, whatever port you assign the server to. So let's do that really quickly. Make sure that uh, our firewall is open for port, port 22. So we're just going to go to Windows Firewall. In Windows 7 it's a little different. Opening ports is a little different than uh, on uh, XP. You have to go into you have to go into the advanced settings. And then you have to uh, have to have some rules. So you have to go into an in you have to go into the inbound rules and the outbound rules. And right there where it says SSH, that's my um, outbound rule to allow things to go out from port 22. Let's see. Yeah, here it is. It's a uh, TCP um, TCP protocol type on a uh, remote port 22 and do the same thing over here also a SSH um, SSH rule to allow things to go through port 22 on both ends, inbound and outbound. And then once you've done that, you've opened up yourself a nice little hole in your firewall to uh, do things with. So what you can do is, um, once you've got it all set up, you can take a uh, software like Putty, which is a uh, SSH client. Let's see, where's Putty? I have it somewhere. Here we go, buddy. I think this is like the third time I've downloaded Putty. But you can use a uh, SSH client to connect to it. So let's see. My IP address. Let's see. Last time I checked, I had a 1033 or 10003 address. Um, IP. Okay, I'm still, I still have the same IP address. So 10.0.0.3 There, and then we can just hit open And now it's going to ask me for my login So I can use my um, uh, Whichever user account It'll use your user accounts To um, As users for the server So Austin And my password There we go. Success. I am now logged into my 
SSH server. Yep. And you can configure the server. You can add a uh, message of the day, and you can add a whole bunch of different options. Let's log out. There we go. But, um... That is how you set up an SSH server on Windows 7.